As you can see, I'm not the minister. So uh, I'm going to try and fill in his shoes. Um, uh, thanks, Mark and uh, Patrick, to, for having me here, but also uh, especially to Mark to set the context pretty nicely that, um, you know, from a, from a global perspective, uh, you know, the, the world is getting pretty local, but the world is also getting very global. And in that kind of dynamism, you know, how do you build a business uh, sitting in our markets? And for people like us who kind of invest in, in founders like you, how do you start thinking about where do you fear the global guys and where do you back the local guys, right? So with that background, I'm just going to take a few uh, minutes to share some thoughts, uh, at least from our perspective, on how we look at Southeast Asia. And you know, when we uh, were given the opportunity to, to be part of the iFlex journey and be an investor, why we kind of latched onto it. Uh, just a quick uh, shameless plug-in for us. So uh, as, as some of you know, we are an early stage VC based in Singapore and invest across the region. Um, some of our LPs, uh, you know, folks like IFC, I think some of them are here, Temasek, EDBI. More importantly, uh, some of the portfolio companies, uh, you know, a proud investor in iFlix. Um, Credivo in Jakarta, Red Doors in Jakarta. So, uh, you know, some of the names hopefully you've heard about. Um, this is a no-brainer. I, I don't want to get into talking too much about things that you all are aware of. And in some sense, uh, you know, you've bettered your life on it as an entrepreneur or as an investor. That today, uh, Southeast Asia is the fastest growing internet market in the world. Uh, what's more interesting there is that in many of the cases, it's growing 50% faster than other markets. Um, I don't know how many people are here from Google and Facebook. Um, anybody here from Google or Facebook? OK, great. I can quote. Uh, so somebody told me, you know, don't ask me who. Somebody told me that Google's business in Southeast Asia is double the size of Google's business in India. And it's growing at more than 50% faster than India. Yes. So it's a no-brainer when Google and Temasek come out with this report that you know, it's a 200 billion over opportunity. I think by next year, this number is going to look like peanuts when the real opportunity starts to kick in, when we all as entrepreneurs, as investors, start to bring out this consumer that is hungry for you know, services or products and has got the digital as a way to access those services and products. So I, I do think there's a much significantly bigger opportunity than this, but for now, I will think we'll take this. The challenge, though, is when I go and do my fundraising, we also have to fundraise, okay? Every two years, we have to go and fundraise. When I do my fundraising, these are the problems that people keep talking about. These are the perceptions that people keep talking about. And some of it, some of it is reality. I've, I've lived in Singapore for about 18 years. I work with large global tech companies, and in fact, that was my you know, selling pitch, that the reason you should hire me is because you don't know Indonesia, and you don't know Thailand, and you don't know India, and every country is so different, and you need to hire local people, and you need to build local strategies. And so in some sense, we've sold this vision of Southeast Asia and Asia to the world, and today, from a tech community perspective, the, the world is showing the mirror back to us and saying, Oh, didn't you tell me it's too fragmented? Like, how do I believe in the story of 700 million people as a consumer? I need to then think about what's a Thailand consumer and what's an Indonesian consumer. So I thought I'll take a few minutes to just share uh, some of the observations we've had on how digital and social media in particular has made an impact on this particular issue. We did an analysis on the top 10 metros in Southeast Asia. We started with that. And a very interesting thing, you know, start com coming out. This may be obvious. From a per capita GDP perspective, the top 10 metros in the region, um, you're talking Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Manila, Jakarta, you know, KL, even if you leave Singapore out, they're all from, you know, more than 20% of their country's GDP. Uh, that's a significant, you know, number to be talking about. More importantly, they are all extremely well penetrated as far as 
all the platforms that you're talking about, whether you're talking social media, credit card, logistics, infrastructure, they are much more better penetrated. Having said that, they were still different cities in different countries. What's changed in the last five to six years is with the advent of social media, and the reason why a Korean drama is the number one, or, or Korean content is the number one thing in Ghana, is because social media has today created a very homogeneous consumer base. And we've seen this, and you'll see it with Netflix and iFlix and many social media uh, platforms as well, that when one content or when one uh, piece of cultural icon takes off in one particular city, it takes off in another city as well. So today, the reality is that a 24-year-old who lives in Jakarta, she's absolutely no different from the 24-year-old living in Singapore, or KL, or Mumbai, or Shanghai for that matter. And today, she's definitely an Indonesian, but she's also a Facebook citizen. She's also a WhatsApp citizen. She's also an Uber citizen. And that homogeneous consumer is what's the, the biggest promise of this market, is that today you can start building businesses for this consumer that has got a very good disposable income, the point I was making before. But today, instead of thinking about her as only Jakarta consumer, you can start building a business where you can go after her in Jakarta, Bangkok, Ho Chi Minh City, Mumbai, Shanghai, and you know even uh, in many cities across the globe. And there are significant businesses being built on the back of that. Some of these are our portfolio companies, Pomelo, uh, you know, shameless plug-in for them, but companies like Rebonds. If you look at these businesses, these are companies that are focused on the top 10 or 15 metros in, in geography in Southeast Asia. Collectively, more than 100, 150 million people out of the 700 million people. A very high per capita GDP, very homogeneous today, as against to six years ago, where you had to build a very different strategy. So that was one big insight and, and you know, one big thesis of investing for us, that when we look at a business and we talk about businesses that are tapping into consumption behavior, then we look for how this business can go from Jakarta to Bangkok, not Jakarta to Surabaya to you know, other cities today. Then what are the businesses that we look for which go from Bangkok to, or Jakarta to Surabaya to other cities? Those are different businesses. That's when you start looking at the middle market of countries like Indonesia. When I say middle market, it's the, uh, the, the middle income affluent consumer, the growing base of middle class citizens in any country like India and Indonesia who are all rising up in terms of their disposable income, who are all becoming you know, digitally savvy. And you'll start to see, and, and these are reports, I'm happy to put this uh, slideshow on, on the Twitter handle, uh, you'll start to see that that middle class is growing significantly, especially outside of Jakarta in Indonesia. More importantly, you're starting to see the same phenomena happen in that middle class. Is the same social media, the same instant messaging platforms are becoming more and more pervasive there as well, and you'll start to see that soon enough, all these people will be on the same platform through which you can reach them whether it's for selling retail or healthcare services or financial services. The challenge, though, is that this consumer today, from a per capita GDP perspective, is not ready for you to make significant monetization out of them. And so if you're building a business which is more focused on this consumer, then you've got to think about network effect. Then you've got to think about scale. You've got to think about building that consumer base and then starting to you know, layer more services on top of that. And that's why I expect that iFlex down the road will be a platform which will be actually layering many more services than what it is doing today. That was hence became the next big takeaway for them, that if you are a business that is focused on the middle class, in the middle bracket of any population, then you've got to think about network. You've got to think about getting to 5, 10, 50 million of those consumers and being able to make even small amounts of money uh, from those consumers is going to be critical for you and layering many more services for them. And these are successful businesses that are doing that. Gojek, as you imagine, started with ride sharing, build that network of consumers, and then is now layering services on that. Is Gojek as profitable as Pomelo? For sure not. But Pomelo will go after a very, very different class of audience, and Gojek will go after a very, very different class of audience. Again, a shameless plug-in for Credivo and iFlix, uh, jungle portfolio companies here. 
So in, in nutshell, just to kind of not bore you to death, uh, if you're an entrepreneur today, or if you're an investor in the region, um, and if, if, if you're somebody like me who's trying to raise money for this region, then this is what we are talking about. You're either talking about a consumption-based business, you're focused on the top 10 metros, from a per capita GDP perspective, they are comparable to any developed market, and they are all homogeneous today. You can sell the same products and services to all of these consumers, make significantly better margins with a very small consumer base. Or you're building a network-based business in a large market like Indonesia. We are going after the middle 100 to 120 million people. Today, you're focused on building connectivity to them, getting access to them, building scale, and then you'll start layering services on top of that. So with that background, I'm going to just uh, you know, come to a conclusion. Uh, thank you a lot for you know, uh, bearing with me, and uh, look forward to catching up with some of you uh, in the breaks.